to talk about the uh, programming language module, uh, module, and I want to tell you why I think uh, it's not just a hype and it uh, has a bright future in front of it. But first, let's play a small game of association. What you see on the screen is a um, happy family from the late 80s. Father, mother, two children, two neighbors, so all good. Who is old enough to recognize the TV show uh, which it depicts? Just a few people I see. Uh, uh, the show is called Married with Children, and uh, it took place between late 80s and late 90s. So let's associate this happy family with uh, programming languages. What we see here is basically we have the father, C, programming language, then mother, small talk, daughter, basic, son, Pascal, and then the annoying neighbors, a little bit of uh, enterprise people, Lisp and Cobol. Okay, let's skip 10 uh, years. Same family, a little bit older, no neighbors, but we have a dog now, right? And the family evolved a little bit, so did the programming languages from uh, late 80s to late 90s, so C become C++. Basic become Visual Basic. Pascal become Turbo Pascal, or Delphi, Objective Turbo Pascal, whatever. Smalltalk become Objective-C in a way, uh, and then the new face on the couch, uh, new programming language, different paradigms, and so on and so forth, Haskell. Okay, let's go now 20 years uh, further in the modern days. What we see and what is really funny in my opinion, C++ is still around, right? Like 25 uh, years later, we don't see that much Turbo Pascal or Visual Basic. Like, we see some Visual Basic in some cases. But uh, we have C++, um, C++ and the family become more um, diverse in a way. We have uh, the father who has a much younger wife, everyone's darling. Let's associate her with Python. Then Python has... Uh, Son from another marriage, Saiten. Who knows Saiten or heard of the language? A few people. Okay. Then we have uh, uh, a beautiful daughter of C++ and quite successful uh, businesswoman, C Sharp. Then we have a similar looking husband, Java. Uh, they have a hipster son, JavaScript. They have two daughters, uh, Scala and Swift, where Swift is more like a granddaughter to C++ in a way than um, directly uh, um, to the parents. And then to the right, we still have like a small family, which is kind of like uh, with a son who wants to be nothing like his father, which is MATLAB. <laughs> then we have an energetic uh, spouse of uh, uh, Julia, which is a bit of a drama queen in a way, but uh, in a good way. And they have an adopted daughter, Rust. We still have two uh, family members uh, there, and one of them is actually the one who's uh, C++ loves to play with, it's Zig, and the love child of C++ and Python, Mojo. So what do we see in this picture? In my opinion, what these people tell, uh, this picture tells us is it's really about time to retire C++. Right, and to be fair, most of the languages we see there actually tried to do this at some point in time, starting with Java. So why do I think that Mojo uh, might succeed here? Well, to be frank with you, Mojo is a very uh, young programming language. It was uh, released publicly only 
one year ago, and there is still, uh, it is still under heavy, um, heavy development. But from what I see, one thing about this programming language is that it is not self-centric. What do I mean by this? Not self-centric. Well, often programming languages want to be distinctive. They bring new syntax, they want to uh, do stuff differently, and it means that there is quite an investment to learn and adopt this language. For Modula, the company which develops uh, Mojo, which was founded by Chris Latner, Mojo is actually a byproduct. The main product is an inference engine they built on top of MLIR, uh, which is a compiler framework. And they started building Mojo because they were uh, tired of writing compute kernels in MLIR by hand. And who could blame them? Writing this by hand is really unsustainable. No? This is how the programming language actually came to be. So the idea behind Mojo is to meet developers where they are. Most developers in the AI space are in love with Python. This is the language which uh, most of the developers are um, familiar with. So Mojo is a superset of Python. It follows the principles of progressive complexity disclosure, meaning that simple things are simple and complex things are still possible. Python developers, data scientists, and everyone in between um, can start by loading Python modules uh, or write Mojo in, uh, with Python idioms. So there is not such a big uh, burden to start using the language. Then, for um, high-performance computer engineers, they can uh, apply techniques from, um, they love from other system programming languages, like, for example, data-oriented design, um, CMD-aware algorithms, utilizing multithreading, and even writing inline MLIR. Thanks to MLIR, Mojo can run on different CPUs. Uh, the team act actively working to bring it uh, also to GPUs and other uh, processing units uh, in the future. So you might say, OK, I'm, uh, who's actually considering themselves as high performance computer engineers? I don't see no hands, actually. Ah, a couple of hands. <laughs> I see a couple of hands. So, so, so like, people <laughs> might say, like, OK, then it's actually not for me, right? Because I normally <laughs> just write, uh, play um, Python code. And here, I would like to show you an example. Because to be honest with you, I'm also not a uh, performance uh, engineer. But for example, uh, I wrote this simple algorithm for a bigger project where it's just a, um, a prefix sum computation, which is super simple. And it uh, writes quite simply in uh, Mojo. But then I stumbled upon a book where in an article, author described how you can um, use it with SIMD, and then get up to eight times faster. And I was able to implement it at Mojo. It's a little, it's much more code. It's more complex, but this is still possible. I didn't have to go to C++, learn Zig, learn Rust. I could do all of it in the same uh, language. This, for me, makes writing Mojo a fun experience. And also to find experience, me, uh, um, for me, it's a nice and inclusive um, community which Mojo has, and the, uh, the um, tools are already uh, very impressive, although that it's a uh, very young programming language. I'm not the only one who thinks that it's great. Uh, Mojo just entered um, Tayobi language index in the first, uh, uh, and it's already on place 48. 
So uh, if you are interested and want to get more info and try out Mojo in browser, you can visit this website and try it out. Thank you.